Graphing is a leading supplier of high performing graphene and also production. And so with me is the CEO, Mike Bell from Singapore here this morning. Um, so Mike, I mean, let's just start with graphene. I mean, I was kind of, I was looking a little bit at your website and I have to admit, I don't know a lot about graphene. So explain what it is, what kind of everyday products is it used for? So graphene is a is a really new material. It was only discovered sort of 16 years ago yeah. and has become a bit of a wonder material. The downside is that it has taken longer than what people assumed to commercialize it and actually turn it into products. The first hurdle was for people to actually work out how to make it in enough volume and in a repeatable quality uh, to be able to then use it in products. And the second complication is how you distribute it into different materials. So firstly, graphene comes from graphite. It's what you call an allotope of carbon. It is a very, very fine powder in, in most cases, and it's typically six to eight atoms thick and comes in a like a dinner plate shape, but very, very small size. And it has some really, really fantastic attributes um, that were sort of discovered in the process. It's exceedingly um, thermally conductive. It's very, very electrically conductive. It resists uh, corrosion. It's a fire retardant. It's water repellent. It uh, improves the durability and abrasion resistance of material. So it's got some great attributes. And what we've been doing over the last few years, along with many other people, is working how to use it as an additive to then add in to other materials. So those attributes can be combined with materials and so you could improve the abrasion resistance of rubber or make a plastic casing more thermally conductive or um, uh, resistant to scratching, et cetera. So there's lots of applications. It's an exciting material and it's one uh, material that doesn't necessarily just associate itself with one industry or one material. Mm. It's a huge potential. It touches every industry, every material out there. So it's exciting. In terms of products that actually use Use it today. This is something where we have had success over the last few years. We've taken our time to develop it with uh, early adopters, and we've got it into things like glass reinforced plastic products, so swimming pools, boats, uh, surfboards. And what it does is it helps uh, those products be lighter, more durable, and also more resistance to water ingress. So for pools that are uh, basically installed under uh, in ground, the ground water doesn't leach into the pool and damage the composites or the GRP. And things like the mining industry, we use rubber wear liners and uh, sort of sacrificial liners and diggers. Uh, and by putting graphene into that rubber, it then extends the life of those up to sixfold in some cases in some applications. So it's a very exciting material. Uh, it is still on the cusp of what we consider a revolutionary revolution, I should say. Uh, and it's, uh, it's, it's basically a game of, of trying to get it into as many applications as possible, but also finding clients that are committed to working out how you disperse it and how you actually solve their problems in their existing materials. Very interesting. And this is, you're in Singapore, but this is an Australian based company. So is Australia kind of a area rich for graphite? Um, it has graphite, but it, I would never classify it as being rich in graphite. Um, we, were, we, we came about by being a graphite company, uh, which was looking at graphite around the world. Um, but through sort of a course of studying graphite and familiarizing ourselves, we worked out a way to make a high purity, high quality graphene from graphite. So we buy uh, 95 to 97% pure graphite from mines around the world and then bring it to Australia and turn it into graphene. Okay, very interesting. And is the, is the advantage here that it, it um, is more durable, lighter, is it better for the environment, and makes products longer lasting? So what's kind of the secret sauce of what makes it such a special uh, material? So when you look at attributes like fire retardancy, it's a naturally occurring fire retardant. Um, it's resistance to abrasion um, means that everything that is in a wear type uh, situation, it can extend the life of. And that's that's great for the user, maybe not so good for the producer because you're trying to get products to last longer. But if you take a case of tires, for instance, if you make tires last longer, it means you ultimately use less rubber and subsequently you're easier on the environment because you're disposing 
less products. So that's that's probably a, a good example to show how it would impact. The same goes for shoes. We put it into shoe soles. Uh, the the effects on the rubber sole gives it a greater grip, but it means it lasts longer. So people get more value for their money, and we're also disposing of less materials. Interesting. Yeah, I saw on your website you had like work boots there, and I'm sure you know for people that are in industries where they need work boots, I mean to have them last longer would be a good advantage. Yeah, that's right. And it's um, so our partner in Australia is called Steel Blue, mm -hmm. and they're a global company that make uh, work boots across a number of industries. And they've now launched a new product line that includes graphene to make the shoes lighter and stronger. Uh, it means they don't have to use some of the heavier materials for equivalent or better protection. So it's a real advantage to them and their users whilst maintaining a very, very high level of comfort. Yeah. And the company is traded on the Australian Stock Exchange, right? So t talk to me a little yes. bit about where it is. How long has the company been around and um, just the financials and where you kind of go from here? So we've been we've been listed for a number of years now. Uh, our initial uh, listing and sort of inflow of capital was very much spent on the research and setup of a factory to produce the material. That science is now banked. We've now finished uh, any expenditure in that factory. We have a capability to produce about 100 tonnes of this very, very high quality uh, repeatable product. It's a continuous flow process to, to make that. And so with that done, we shift our focus solely to uh, the commercialization and sales channel. So we trade at about sort of 24, 25 cents a share. We've got a market cap of about 130 million Australian. Uh, and our sort of looking forward strategy over the next 12, 18 months is to drive demand for this product. We don't need to worry about large capex to incre increase capacity or to build more factories that is all available and banked mm -hmm. so we are just focusing on the commercialization of it spreading our, our opportunity wings as far as they can go across so many different industries we're focused on rubbers and elastomers composites and plastics um, coatings and inks energy storage and the cement and concrete space and that's just so we can channel our focus a bit better than trying to grab every possible opportunity the the pipeline of opportunity is huge for us there's a lot of people want to get uh, more knowledgeable about graphene and see how they can differentiate their products and make their products better um, our trouble is trying to resource that find the right people that can be educated well enough on our products and drive it forward just simply because of the sheer numbers of opportunities so that's that's pretty exciting now is there any geographical ex um, expansion you can do as well i mean in addition to product like for example in the u.s are you operational here or might that be some place in the future yeah, it probably actually comes back to legislated approvals to sell the product. This is a new material, a new nano material, uh, so it does have its loopholes to uh, to, to work through. Uh, for the for the European Union and the UK, we are licensed to sell uh, ten ton per the, per each of those regions, and then sort of Australia, New Zealand around the hundred ton mark. We have all the other large geographical markets we are progressing our approvals to be able to sell the material in those as we speak um, so it's very much a case of uh, moderating what you pay to get the ability and approve to sell into those markets versus what you're actually going to sell so it's a it's 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 a challenge but it's something we actively <laughs> work on yeah that's business right you just try kind of try to always throw that needle okay so um finally i mean just so you talked about rubbers and plastics what are are some other applications that may be used for graphing in the future? So we've sort of recently had our successes with pools and boats and surfboards and shoes and these wear liners, etc. We've definitely sort of bookended those and they, they are now in a forecasted production sense. So that's really good. It sort of underpins our, our growth and operations moving forward. Where we see probably some of the most interesting developments is in the cement and concrete space that has massive um, uh, sort of environmental implications and reducing the amount of cement used. So we're pouring a lot of time in both research and development and into developing distributors in that space. Uh, and also coatings and inks. The Our product is uh, sort of dispersible in water and being able to put that into things like paints as fire retardants or on coatings to control radar signatures or electromagnetic interference, et cetera, is very, very 
um, high profile at this stage. So we're doing a lot of work there. And then thirdly, in energy storage, we've got a lot of uh, projects on at the moment, research projects into hydrogen fuel cells, into the production of hydrogen and graphite as, as a method to produce graphene, which has uncovered a process in itself, which is, which is exciting, and also supercapacitors. And these are areas which we're actively looking for commercial partners to help us bring them to market, i.e. supercapacitors. Mm. So there's, there's lots on at the moment, uh, and there's a lot of uh, potential for very, very high growth, which we're excited about. Yeah, now very interesting. And the hydrogen thing I know is getting a lot of traction here in the US. So um, that could be yeah. really interesting in the future. Thank you so much, Mike, for joining us. Um, I learned a lot about graph sure. graphene and graphite today. So thank you so much. Great. Thanks for, thanks for talking, Jane. Much appreciated.